Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. I just want to note tonight I will be doing a full discussion of Star Wars Visions probably around 7 o'clock Eastern Time. So if that's something you're excited for, check out the channel. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. All right, so today we're doing another Starship Versus. And just a reminder, guys, make sure you leave suggestions for future videos down below. And this is an interesting one because we are looking at two very different evolutions of the Star Destroyer, the Nadiri Starhawk from Star Wars Canon and the Allegiance class Star Destroyer from Star Wars Legends. Now, there will actually be two rounds for this. The Allegiance doesn't carry fighters. It doesn't have a main hangar bay. So we're going to do a first round where the Starhawk also won't be carrying fighters and then a second round where both ships are in their natural states, i.e. the Starhawk will probably be carrying at least two squadrons. With that being said, let's get started and I'm going to first take a look at the Starhawk, then the Allegiance. If you want to skip around, you can use the timeline down below. So the Starhawk was the first major warship created by the New Republic and it was really something. If you're not familiar with the vessel, you might be kind of questioning how I said it's an evolution of the Star Destroyer. It looks nothing like an Imperial Star Destroyer. However, the Starhawk is actually made out of scrapped ISDs. Now, I sometimes question the wisdom of this, felt like it may be better just to use the Imperial Star Destroyers as they exist. But from the Third Alphabet Squadron book and Star Wars Squadrons, it seems like the Star Destroyers used in the Starhawk program were largely ones that would have had to be otherwise decommissioned. So the Starhawk is sort of this weird mishmash of new technology and existing Imperial systems. When we talk about what's old, well, the Starhawk, according to the Starship and Speeders FFG guide, uses the command towers, turbo laser barbettes, and engines of an ISD-2. While hull plating, electronics, computer systems, etc. are sort of used as they fit across the vessel. The Starhawk was quite large though, you can tell by looking at the shield bulb here that it's larger than an ISD, and specifically it's 2400 meters in length. That is actually slightly larger than the Allegiance, which is 2200 meters, however I'm going to guess that it's overall perhaps a little bit less massive because it doesn't really flare out in the same way. The Starhawk is also quite different from a design standpoint in that it presents a very heavily armored frontal section. That bow part is meant to be intimidating and to absorb a lot of firepower and helps the Starhawk take on very large ships like we see at the Battle of Jakku where a trio of Starhawks help take down an executor class Super Star Destroyer. There were actually several different Starhawk subtypes. Most notably, there was a prototype Starhawk we see in Star Wars Squad which does have some differences, but the Starhawk 1 and 2 are really just creations of the FFG Armada system, so I don't really think the difference there is important. So when looking at weapons and everything else, we'll take the Mark 1 Starhawk's numbers, and we have actually some hard numbers, which is nice. We know that the ship has five port and five starboard, a couple barbette turbo lasers. Those are the big guns on the ISD-2s. 24 forward mounted heavy turbo laser batteries, then an additional 40 ion turrets, four ion batteries, and additionally point defense cannons and concussion missile launchers. I think it makes sense to contrast these weapons with the ISD-2, not only because it's made out of Star Destroyer parts, but also because that ship serves as a good comparison point when talking about the Allegiance. When it comes to pure capital ship killing power, the Starhawk is actually slightly less impressive, I would say, than the ISD-2, at least in pure numbers. It does have one extra set of those big octuple barbettes but only has about two-thirds the turbo lasers and ion cannon. That being said, the Starhawk does also have point defense cannons, which the ISD-2 is missing, and concussion missile launchers. Based on the Starhawk's design, although we don't really have specifics, and you can't even really tell in Star Wars Squadrons, it does seem like most of the vessel's weapons can fire forward at an enemy, although some are placed along the trenches on the side, so it should be reasonably effective in a one-on-one -on -one battle. However, we haven't discussed the Starhawk's most unique feature, which probably accounts for some of the decrease in armament compared to its predecessor, 
and that is its massive tractor beam. So the tractor beam on the Mark I Starhawk actually surrounds the main hangar and is incredibly strong. There's really no comparable vessel in Star Wars, at least that I can think of. The Starhawk and its tractor beam literally destroyed the Ravager at Jakku. That ship's engines were destroyed and the Starhawk brought it down to the planet's surface. However, you can kind of explain that away as just simple physics. There's nothing stopping the Star Destroyer from falling to the surface, so it falls. However, in Star Wars Squadrons, we actually see the Starhawk basically rattle apart an Imperial Star Destroyer. Now, we also see that it doesn't fire its weapons as this is happening. This may be because this is still the prototype, and from what I remember, the ship's weapons haven't been fully installed yet, but it could also be because the tractor beam's incredible power requirements. But still, I can definitely see this being used not only to hold an enemy in battle and perhaps gain a tactical advantage that way, but also to cause physical damage to the ship. When it comes to starfighters, a Starhawk would usually be carrying probably a squadron of X-Wings and then some other fighter type. I don't like to go by the max fighter complement because that's just not traditionally what the Starhawk would have been carrying, but it probably would have had room for six or more fighter squadrons and usually would have had two or three. All right, so let's talk about the Allegiance, a ship which has an interesting history I've talked about on the channel before. A ship which would become the Allegiance first appeared in Dark Empire. It was notably different than an Imperial Star Destroyer, a Lacta Hang. It's called the Allegiance and referred to as a Super Star Destroyer. Fractal Sponge would later take on this design and make it his own, which became canon through the Essential Guide to Warfare. However, a lot of the actual lore still comes from the images themselves, and I choose to take what Fractal Sponge himself has said about the ship and how he intended to design it as pretty much canon. So, the Allegiance is 2.2 kilometers long, it notably lacks a hangar, and instead has a clearly larger generator and more armor. Overall, the ship comes to about two and a half times the volume of the ISD, so it's outputting a lot more power through the larger generator, which according to Fractal is actually six times the volume. When you take that and look at how this ship is designed, this thing is clearly meant for killing other capital ships. And according to Fractal, he saw this thing as a specialized ship killer, so we're seeing how despite its smaller size, it's definitely going to be a match for the Starhawk. What are we talking about with specific weapons? Well, to get the big ones out of the way, we can see that there are six of those main Star Destroyer octuple barbette batteries on each side of the vessel for 12 in total. And additionally, Fractal's model has 60 of these really cool turreted quad turbo lasers then about 200 smaller weapons. Additionally, just looking at the ship, you can tell that it's a lot more heavily armored than a standard Imperial Star Destroyer. Not only is extra visible plating, but just the way it's designed, you can see it's a bit stouter. The main sort of terraces of the superstructure look sturdier, and just overall, given its role, you can tell that this ship can take a beating. One thing I really like about the Allegiance is actually those turreted weapons. This thing can probably hit enemies from a variety of angles. It will be great for fighting a ship one-on-one. -on -one. It works well in a fleet because it specializes so heavily and it can have its weak spots protected by other ships, corvettes, carriers, etc. The Allegiance also does have some point defense cannon. Some of those 200 smaller weapons would be point defense guns. So it's not totally toothless against a starfighter assault, but still, that is one disadvantage. All right, so let's get into round one. And I think the difference between these two ships is pretty obvious. The Allegiance is outright more powerful. It's a more specialized vessel, even at its shorter length. It's probably more massive overall. Whereas the Starhawk is a state-of-the-art design with one big special weapon. Though I think the main question for me is, can the Starhawk's tractor beam in round one where fighters aren't a factor do enough to counter the Allegiance's durability ability and firepower advantage and I just don't think so. The Allegiance is larger than an Imperial Star Destroyer. I don't think it's going to be shaken apart in the same way as the ISD was. I don't doubt that the Starhawk can hold it in place, but I don't think it has the firepower to take it out as the Allegiance is firing back. It's just too big, too blunt, and too powerful. I'm actually a little surprised because before going into this matchup and taking a closer look at the Allegiance, 
I actually thought the Starhawk would probably be the ship to pull this out, but the further I went in, the further the Allegiance's pure, unadulterated killing power sort of spoke to me. Overall, I give this to the Allegiance in round one, eight times out of ten. I don't think the Starhawk is going to want to stay close to this thing. It will be able to hang for a while because the Starhawk 2 is designed to take on single enemy capital ships with its well-armored nose, but it just doesn't have the teeth to fight back, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to round two, I can definitely definitely see starfighters here making a difference. I don't think the Starhawk really loses a whole lot by carrying those fighters on board, but it gains a lot in a battle like this, where the ships will be slagging each other for a while. Where the Starhawk has locked the Allegiance into place, I can very easily see three squadrons to five squadrons of fighters making a big difference, especially with Y-Wings or B-Wings involved. Star Destroyers, even when covered by fighters, have shown a lot of vulnerabilities, and all you really need to do is have fighters coordinate an attack on a single part of the shield. Get that shield down, then you can attack a shield bulb, or the bridge, or something like that. That's really the great thing about Starfighters in Star Wars, they can pick apart single parts of the shield subsystems. Yeah, the Allegiance will be returning fire with its point defense and small weapons, but I think the Starhawk at full capacity has at least a chance, and I'm gonna give it in round two, probably a six and a half out of 10. Of course, the Allegiance isn't normally fighting without support, so it is a bit unfair to put it in a position it wasn't designed for, but that's that. That's why I chose to include round one. That, however, is all for me today, guys. Let me know, do you agree with my analysis? Do you disagree? Is there a matchup you'd like to see next? Let me know all of that and more down below. Until next time, guys, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.